program is brought to you by the friends and partners of AMI. Alleluia Ministries International believes in the Bible and Christ. We are Christ-centered and Jesus is at the heart of everything we believe and do. Our mission is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Through this mission, we seek to empower believers and equip them with the tools to share the gospel with the world and to live a life of faith, hope and love in Christ. Jesus remains the same yesterday, today and forever. Just as it was in scripture, his power is at work today in the church. We are AMI. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord our God bless you. What a joy we have to just be together around the Word of God once again. I'm excited because I know the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ will set us free again today. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Before welcoming you all officially, please let me tell you that God is dealing with the church cleansing us of anything that the enemy has needed together to keep us in bondage. We are in the hour of the Lord. This is time that the Lord want to set men and women free. We believe that today shall be an awakening, a revival as we have heard before. But this revival this time will be in a level not anticipated by anyone anyone before us. The outpouring of the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ will be far beyond what the preacher interpreted the prophecy of Joel to be. The Lord is about to do scary stuff to those who are not aligned with him. It will be bizarre. God will do things with no reference. I am speaking, preparing you for what the Lord has set in heaven to do. It shall happen because this is the will of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every spirit of uh, deception, erratic spirit of the enemy, designed to take men out of the course the Lord has set for them, will be dealt with in this season. In Jesus' precious name. Do I join the chorus of those who believe that Jesus Christ is coming very, very, very soon and are out there voicing themselves? Yes, Jesus Christ is returning. This will be a glorious return of our Lord Jesus Christ, the second return of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we as a church of our Lord Jesus Christ should be ready. We should be not only informed, but we must align with the information of his uh, second coming whatever we see whatever we have on earth should have only meaning in what God has set for it and for you and for me welcome to the rise of the prophetic voice with me of Lukao today again we go to the word of God and continue with the thought the Lord has given us a sharing on the spirit of Absalom Absalom the spirit that rebels against the Father, you on Facebook, shalom to you. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This peace that surpasses all understanding, may God keep your mind in Him. May the glory of God reach you where you are in the name which is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Shalom to you. Using a small or big device, whatever the case may be, God bless you. Three things you can do possibly to add value in uh, reaching out the lost and building the kingdom of God. Share the content of this video on your page. Just click share and the Lord will take it from there. Second thing you can do, comment. As you're commenting, you're keeping all this alive. You're keeping yourself alive in what God is saying. You're participating, you're connecting yourself. And lastly, I want you to keep on liking the video. Like it as many times as you can. A thousand likes, a thousand miracles. The Lord bless you. We will have a good time in the word of God. And we will receive from him what is conveying through my little vocal cord to you and to me. Wherever you are, you are on YouTube. Shalom to you. Peace be unto you. May the glorious Savior, our Jesus Christ, do you good. Your point of connection will be your point of your miracle today. 
There is power in our Lord Jesus. And the power of our Lord Jesus Christ will uh, manifest in this time in your life. I want you to be as connected, not only with uh, what you see, but uh, your spirit should be aligned with what God is saying. This is what the Bible reports concerning faith, that without it, it is impossible to please God. And the two reasons are given. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because of one. Those who approach God must believe that God is, meaning God exists. Two, and he rewards those who diligently seek his face. I want you to understand, if faith is this important, indispensable ingredient, without it, we cannot be well with God. We need to understand what is that? What is that faith? F-A-I-T-H. What is faith? Faith is agreeing with God in what God has said. See, your agreement when you are tuning the frequency of God, that spells faith in your life. While you are watching, connect in your spirit. Be in agreement with what God is saying. See, the word of God does not always come to make us feel good. Oftentimes, the word of God will come and shake you a little bit. You do not agree with the word because it is confirming your pattern of life. God, through his word, rebukes us. He corrects us. He opens our eyes to see the truth. Now, if you are selective to what you absorb when it comes to the word of God, you say, oh, well, I live normally in this way. When the word of God comes and is not supportive to my way of life, I can't accept that. You can't debate with the word of God and win. It is uh, literally a choice of perdition for a man to choose his own understanding over the word of God. You should not lean on your own understanding. You gotta have a standard in life, a standard that becomes your, 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 your reference. This standard is the point you use to model your own life. When the word of God says you should and that you are not doing, you have to begin to do because the word of God says you should do. You should do one, two, three that you are not doing. And if the word of God forbids you to do certain things, stop doing them. Irrespective of the inclination of our lives, we have different inclinations. You see, we are mortals in the flesh, saved by grace, regenerated by grace. And the mind of man is a point of his transformation. And for this to happen, we need to allow the word of God to work us out, work your temperament, work your character, work your inclinations Work your, your, your alignment, the word of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what is it that transforms us? It is the word of God. Now, my precious, you are watching with your family. You're watching at home. You are on TV. You're watching through AMI TV. I want to welcome you and greet you in the name of Jesus. Shalom to you. Peace unto you. May God do you good. May the, gr the grace of God, the glory of God be your portion. Altogether, your environment is saturated with the grace of God, the power of God, and God will do you well. You in America, I greet you. You are in Asia. You are in Africa. You are in Europe, north, south, east, west. May the Lord bless you. May God see you. Those in New Zealand, those in Australia, wherever you may be in a different part of this land, or your land, Australia. May God bless you. Those who are wherever around in different highlands, the Lord our God is with you and God will do you good. We remember what is happening right now in the Middle East and we pray that God's peace, the peace of God, Jesus said, peace I give to you, not as the world gives it to you, my peace. I give unto you. We pray for peace. We pray that God may heal and God may protect us. We also pray for those who are in the United Arab Emirates. With uh, all that we have seen, the floods and so forth, we do not know if uh, it was a true seeding that uh, they had experienced the kind of rain 
that has been disruptive that they have experienced, but we believe that God is on his throne. God is in control and all this will work for the good. In fact, those in authority are rejoicing in one, on one side that they have rain as they had, or at least access to water as they had. Greetings to all of you, shalom to you, peace unto you, and may God bless you. We pray for peace. We pray for the cessation of the bullet and firing noise in the uh, part of Europe where men and women are losing their lives daily. We'll never rejoice over the killing of a people for one reason or another. So we pray that God may bring the bloodshed, I call it bloodshed, not because I'm pointing finger, but bloodshed that is taking place uh, between Russia and Ukraine to come to a pass, to come to peace, to come to an end. You know, and in our time today, you cannot really speak about wars around and not speak about the terrifying and uh, senseless killing that is happening in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Men's hearts are wicked, and uh, through the egocentric uh, way of thinking that is uh, short lived, they allow so many innocent people to die daily. We believe that whatever causes the conflict between uh, uh, men in that region, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, may find a solution. We are people who by this time, by now, with all that we claim to have achieved in terms of maturity, approach of life, we cannot live in the barbaries of yesterday, like those who went from crusade to crusade killing. There must certainly be ways of uh, mitigating on situations and uh, addressing our shortfalls. I believe, you know, the, there is a way to sit around the table and uh, try to find what will work for everyone. Shalom to you. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. What a mighty God we serve. And today is giving us this grace, the opportunity and the privilege to come again around the word of God. And as I come to the word of God, allow me to take a minute or so and just thank God for those of you who are watching. Trudy, God bless you. China, child, God bless you. Katia, God bless you. Uh, I have so many of you, thousands of you who are already connected. This is the beauty part of the word given and also the beauty part of what technology offers us. We need to use what is available to us for good, not for evil. We do not use what is available to us today to hurt, to destroy others. No, but we use it to share the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. And thousands of us here, thousands, so many of us that uh, we will fill stadiums I want to welcome you. God bless you. I'm trying to read your names, but uh, the, the, comment, uh, the commentaries are just too many and it's too fast. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Peace unto you all and God bless you. Absalom. The word Absalom etymologically means the father of peace. Your identity in your name must translate to your living, your behavior, your way of conducting yourself. If you are called a father of nation, it's because it is your destiny to be a father of nation. The one who's called a crook is because he is he's born in it or he has been identified through his behavior to be a crook. You call a liar because somebody has lied repeatedly. He has made lying his function. There are people who lie as they live or as they breathe. They lie even when they have no need to lie. Absalom was a good name. Still, I will not encourage that you call your son Absalom simply because of its meaning. And if you ask me why, I'll say it's because of the reputation of the name. Absalom by itself is not a bad name. 
It's a beautiful name with a beautiful meaning. Absalom here is the son of a man known as David, king of Israel, after King Saul. This man walked with God, he loved God, and it was evident that the hand of God, that the hand of God was upon him. David was such a man. He was different because of his reliance on God. He depended on God. Do you depend on God? When events of life are not aligned with uh, what gives you peace, what do you do? When you come across contradictive elements of life, what do you do? When the truth and reality seems to be in different tables, what do you do? Do you rely on God? Do you say amen and find your peace only when everything seems to be well? David relied on God. He kept his faith on Jehovah. And throughout his life, though he had his ups and downs, we have seen the hand of God upon him. It is this David that the Lord has spoken about. When he said, I have found David. He said, a man after my own heart. I want to pause and think. Does God still have men after his own heart? Do we have in this generation on the altar of God, in the pews, in the church, or in families, men that God may speak of and say, this is a man, this is a woman after my own heart. Or oh, I'll go further. Am I a man after God's own heart? Are you a man or a woman after God's own heart? You know, when you begin to ask yourself the right question, you will have an opportunity to get and tap into the right answers. It is my sincere faith that through Jesus Christ, our righteousness, we have been embraced by God and accepted just as he did with David and even more. The anointing of God rests upon us. We are selected and chosen by God. He equipped us and he set us on the path of righteousness. You are blessed beyond what your behavior can produce. You are God's choice, God's greatest idea. You, my friend, you are God's greatest investment. So David was a man after God's own heart. And he walked with him. Now, David says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because he was sure that God was always with him. He was uh, so at peace with the fact that God was with him. The presence of God being with you is uh, a great deal. Someone say, God is uh, omnipresent. Is there anyway. Now when we speak about the presence of God in somebody's life, we're talking about the activated presence of God, meaning God is uh, manifesting his presence. He's not merely watching and having control over every situation and being present in many ways uh, according to what I have uh, 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 presented. Legally is there. Uh, uh, he has control over it. Uh, he sees what is happening as God is in the grave. God is in the, the sky. God is uh, in the forest. God is in the, uh, 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 in the river, whatever the case may be. But when we speak about the presence of God, we're talking about that active presence of God that uh, uh, causes the glory of God to manifest. Because when we say the glory of God and the presence of God, you are not far from each other because the glory of God, the splendor of God is uh, the manifested presence of God. When Jehovah Jireh manifests, you see what Jehovah Jireh carries. When Jehovah Rapha manifests, you see what Jehovah Rapha carries. Healing takes place here and there. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I fear no evil, for you are with me. Now, David had many children. He had many wives. And here the Bible speaks of his uh, third son, known as Absalom, a young man who was handsome, good-looking. On the outside, he had it all. One that uh, you will appreciate from far, and that you will want to emulate. 
You want to walk like him. You want to speak like him. In his time, probably, he was an influencer. He was an inspiration. He was a role model because he had it all. You know, we want to model ourselves to look like those we estimate to be more than us. He smiles better, he speaks better, he walks better, he has more. And we mix those people, you know, our, our models. Absalom was such. On the outside, he had it all. But the same Absalom who had it all on the outside, the Bible shows that he was cunning. His heart was filled with ambitions, ambitions that were Contrary to the will of God. Absalom was one who wanted to get by force what was not given to him. He was one who wanted to impose himself. Absalom was one who believed that uh, he was the only one who could do what he supposed, what's supposed to be done out there. He thought that uh, his ways was better or were better than uh, anybody else. Absalom felt that he was so high that he could even correct his father, the king. He saw fault in everything. And you see, when you are in a place where fault is in everyone, everyone else but you, it becomes dangerous. Dangerous because you become judgmental. And not only that you become judgmental, you develop a certain degree of uh, uh, um, impatience. You, you, you're not patient. You are not tolerant. You cannot tolerate any mistake that you see out there because whatever you are setting as a standard is not to yourself. It is to others. Please, let me tell you. If you have walked under the sun a little longer, you will know this, that under the sun, there will always be one that is a little bit better than you. So if you feel like what I do, I am, it's all. Think again. You must allow the, 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 the possibility of being corrected, the possibility of other views. Absalom was short-tempered. Well, there was an issue. His own brother, Amnon had raped the sister, Tamar, and that caused him grief. And he waited because of this evil that had taken place for two years to destroy his brother. He killed his own brother. He set his brother up because his standard was so high that he had no way to maneuver, no way to say, oh, well, let's go down, let's find a different way, let's find a solution. There are many issues and many situations that are supposed not to be. But when you find yourself with those situations that had already happened, what do you do? Will you shoot everybody dead? No. In wisdom, you have to find a way to mitigate situations. You see, knowledge is uh, based on the what, and the wisdom is based on the how. Somebody say that the wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge because wisdom will help you navigate through very complicated situations. He had rage in him. He killed his brother, reign for his own life, remain in exile for three years, and return with a, a conniving plan against his own father. Absalom knew that he had no chance to become king naturally. So he decided, I will take it by force. Was he aware that David was his father and David was God's ordained servant? Yes, he heard all the psalm and all the songs and all the prayers of David. They had the chronicles of the king that stipulated exactly what had taken place prior to David becoming king and during his kingdom. He, 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 he was not uh, in the place of ignorance when it came to who his father was. But you see, there has been a heart, in his heart, something that wanted to exalt him above even the thing that he knew that was set by God. That is Absalom. Pride is dangerous. Pride focuses on you. 
Pride gives you the best and uh, nobody else. Pride qualifies you where you're supposed not to be qualified. You think that the head is not good enough. You got to be the head. I tell you, it is uh, suffocating to be in the presence of somebody who does not know how to recognize uh, something else but him. It is uh, oppressive to hear a conversation focus and centralize around I, me, myself, I, me, myself, I, me, myself, I, me, myself. Your revelation cannot be just uh, the wrong of uh, those uh, above you, no. Your best contribution is not uh, from uh, a, a point of being negative. Well, I'm not saying that uh, seeing something that is uh, 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 not well, supposed not to be uh, in your system. No, you may see it, but it becomes a problem if uh, you are inclined only to see what is not well. You know, you, you, you hear today and you watch on uh, TV and uh, you read on some papers uh, uh, the wrong of one person. And uh, you can see, you know, uh, sessions uh, being invested on how wrong that person is. Now, if you open yourself to it once, twice, three times, you start feeling overwhelmed because there is no balance. It is not bad to speak about the good of someone versus is a shortfalls. It brings balance and it makes you truthful. But when all we shoot is this man is wrong, this leader is wrong, my father is wrong, my mother is wrong, did you take time to realize that if you are where you are, they had a contribution that costed them, uh, uh, you know, a great deal. Your mother maybe had uh, said no to her own desire, pleasure, just because she had to be a mother to you. Your father had sacrificed himself a great deal to be where he is, so you may be where you are. Absalom wanted more. So he came, he bowed to his father with a plan. Absalom is not a subject to bring us back to remember just what had passed. The spirit of Absalom is attacking, destroying from within many families, many organizations, many companies, many churches, and our world as we know it. You must always understand that the enemy that is far is less dangerous than one that is close. Just as the enemy you know is uh, less dangerous than the one you do not know. Absalom was there as a son, but his heart was in competition with his father. If you as a daughter, you will compete with your own mother, who knows the best. You compete with your own father as a son. You a lost case. I open a bracket and tell you, whoever rises up against his father will never win before God. What am I trying to say? And I want you to understand that this is cast by God on stones. A battle that you will never win, no matter what you say and what you do, is a battle against your own father, especially when he's aligned with God. Irrespective of how you try. You can try if you are stubborn. You never win. You will Drink poison by doing so. And that those are principles that we have grown to know and develop and built ourselves on that. It does not matter. How can I stand and fight the one who stood to share the good news of God with me? My spiritual father, how? There will never be a day I stand against my biological father. Never. Three days ago, it was his birthday. My biological father still lives. And every time I'm with him, no matter what he does or he says, sometimes he want to speak of things that 
literally, we spoke about 10 times and just want to go back and say it. I exercise patience. Because I remember this is the person that had me on his lap, you know, uh, while driving. I remember he's the person who carried me in the swimming pool. I remember he's the person who took me to school. If he has been such a blessing, why will I not be just for a little time, a little few hours patient? You cannot fight your father and win. You, you can swallow the Bible if you want. You, you can quote it from morning till evening. You can uh, claim whatever you want. I can tell you with all the anointing you have, this battle is guarantee a battle that you lose. It's a battle against your father. I'm speaking to you who have uh, embraced a certain group of rebellious uh, people who stood against the altar of God, stood against the men of God or the women of God. You who have uh, connived with uh, your cousins and uh, your, your siblings against your own father, pointing out his uh, short falls as if you came out of a rock. I want you to understand, unless you allow the Lord through his word to mold you to a place where you repent and build yourself better with God, you're a lost case. You will never win. God identifies himself as a father and takes personal anything revolve that revolves the father. Am I implying that fathers will always be right? No. You see, in many cultures around the world and our local cultures, ways of men, of behaving and living in Africa, when your father has shortfalls for you in Africa to address it, you have to go via the elders. You cannot sit your father down and teach him a lesson. This is a lost generation, a generation with no reverence. A generation of shoot it all. A generation that is so short-tempered. How dare you answer your father? Some cultures in our land, if you don't answer your father, they have to be a great ceremony to repay that which you have done. I tell you, it is a big deal. The sacred support the spiritual. When something is spiritual, it has to be seen through the sacred around it. If an altar is an altar, it has to be sacred. And what is sacred is something that you do not just touch, move, and have your way on it. No. You, you have to restrain yourself. And so is with fathers. Absalom decided to turn his heart against his father. The spirit that leads men today to turn their heart against their father is a weakness that destroys like cancer from inside. When a child begins to think that I know it all, his heart becomes like the heart of Absalom. There is a spirit that the enemy has been uh, uh, releasing in many of us, not only in uh, society through the academic system and uh, the ways of life today, but also a spirit that has been uh, infiltrating the church today, where we, we believe that my way is my way, my way is inspired by God. We have no, uh, no consideration on the Lord's anointed one for us to be corrected to be helped. This is why, and this is the reason behind the downfall and the shortfall of many great people. In life, if all you want to do is what you feel like, you go nowhere. You know, to discipline yourself is uh, to impose certain rites on you that may not be nice and pleasing at the moment, but will end up producing the right and the correct thing that you desire. Saying no to yourself is critical for your well-being and your success. You cannot be given to every tendency that you have, every so-called ambition. God does not use you simply because you are the general overseer. 
You don't need to be the so-called first leader for you to be used by God or to you to, for you to be great. Joseph was not Pharaoh, and he did not desire with his power and wisdom to become Pharaoh. Why would a Daniel try now to fight to become a Nebuchadnezzar? You can well be used by God as Peter, supporting your Jesus Christ till the end. You do not need to uh, uh, push away your own Elijah so you may take his place. No, just allow him to fulfill his mandate and yours will unfold and a God will put his hands on you and you will grow higher. Absalom was cunning. Absalom was not one that took weapons and began to shoot on his father in the open. No, he had a plane. Some people have plans and they are busy executing their plan slowly, slowly, slowly. God, today I pray, will not only expose the Absalom spirit, but will I help the captive, those the spirit of Absalom is using. I believe that there is a difference between those who are operating now in ignorance and are captive, captives of this spirit and those who have embraced it fully. Some people are just being used. And once the enemy deals with you, leading you to your um, shameful death, he applauds for himself. But I pray that this may not be the case for you in the name of Jesus. Second Samuel chapter 15, I read from verse 1, and we go. After this, it happened that Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Now Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. So it was whenever anyone who had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision, that Absalom would call to him and say, what city are you from? And he will say, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Then Absalom will say to him, look, your case is good and right, but there is no deputy to the, of the king to hear you. Moreover, Absalom will say, oh, that I were made judge in the land and everyone who has any suit meaning lawsuit or cause will come to me, then I would give him justice. Now he's focusing on those with an issue and he's going completely against the king. You see, justice is not just uh, taking the side of somebody. Justice is the right middle of what's supposed to be, irrespective of whether you want more favor or the other one. No, justice is justice. And here, Absalom is targeting men who had issues, men with lawsuits, men who had uh, needs, and he targeted them. You see, every child of God listening to me, you must already, as you're listening to this word, through the Spirit of God, begin to identify those who have been speaking in the manner of this Absalom, I'll do better. Oh, I really wish that you had a pastor that I will pray for you. I wish your father would be there in every football match. I wish your father was a better man to stand with you every time you go through something. I wish your mother was always there. Well, your mother has to take care of your siblings. Your father has to take care of the house. And if here and there they miss uh, an appointment and so forth, you cannot shoot them down because of that. Don't you remember all the other good things that I've done? Be careful of the voice that comes to expose the wickedness of the, 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 the weak of the weak, the wickedness of your father and expose the shortfalls. Those who come to tell you, well, your pastor doesn't speak in tongue like everybody else. Be careful. Be very careful. He was promoting himself. The spirit of Absalom promote himself. 
above every other. You, you, you are in the church. You feel like because you have a higher academic qualifications, you are more than anybody singing there, anybody praising there, anyone speaking there. You have lost your ways. Repent. You've lost your ways. Or why do you think that because you have some money in the bank, you are better than your father because he does not have. You have lost your ways. Oh, well, I, I, I. May God help us and deliver us from the I. Then Absalom will say, look, your case is good and so forth. The Bible says in verse 5, and so it was whenever anyone come, came near to bow down to him that he would put out his hand and take him and kiss him. <laughs> wow. You see, sometimes to get the attention of people, you have to play the game that makes sense to them. You will see someone getting into power today and the first trip of uh, such a person, a governor, a leader, he plays that uh, he is a part of the people. He goes, uh, he's found seated in a certain house there with uh, just a common people and they're showing that I'm identifying myself with you. You see someone entering into a flight. He's Mr. President. He's uh, in a commercial flight and he's seated at the back there in economy. When you see that, you say, well, we have one of us. Most of the time, it's not so. That was just uh, to, uh, to blind you. After that, you see the true color. I've known people, and I'm praying for God to raise such outstanding men who have been truthful. They are not just new. We can trace their ways. We can see what they have been, you know, true and what they are taking because the character of man must be consistent when you choose your leader you must check his track record you will know if this person is really one who identifies with us or is just one that is coming to to blind us absalom every time one will kneel down in the protocol of the land they will allow the person to show respect and reverence but he did not permit that he will go and pull him up. Now, can you imagine you are just this person that went to uh, the king and before you're getting, getting to the king, someone from the king comes and tells you, your case is good. You take his word, even if you knew that you were guilty. And the person say, if I was there, I would have made way for you. You begin to desire the person to be there. And as you express gratitude to the person by bowing to him, he goes to the extent of uh, stretching his hands to you. And we're talking about a king, a king's son, a prince, lifting you up and kissing you. Gee, ooh, those people became evangelists. They left the presence of Absalom with uh, nobody else's word, but Absalom, 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 the best. Absalom is the answer. Absalom is our way out of any trouble. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. He stole the heart to steal. It's an illicit move. He took the heart of the people. He stole it. Now, pastor, you must be very careful. Father, you must be very careful. Who's stealing the heart of your son or your daughter? You have a daughter. This daughter, and I'm talking to you, precious daughter of God, your father and your mother today are not good. They don't understand you because you are dating. You are dating in a secret somebody who has no uh, proof or who has not taken responsibility of anything in his life. Your parent who loved you, who has always been there, who took care of you to this date. Now, because you have opened yourself, to a certain dating gentleman or dating girl who's uh, trying to push his or her own interest by telling you, wow, they're exaggerating. They cannot be so strict on you. You know, you, you should take your right. 
They're supposed not to say this to you. Why do you allow your father to say that? Why do you allow your mother? You have embraced that against your own father. It is a shame. It's a shame. It's really a shameful thing. Now, father, mother, right before your sight, the heart of your son is being stolen. There are people with skills to steal people's heart. You are there worshiping God as a pastor. You do not know that the deacon has stolen the heart of everybody. In fact, when you appear, you look more like a problem. You are the one anointed. God is with you. But the people's hearts are no longer with you because of Absalom. Absalom is dangerous. Absalom has the potential to cause great calamities. Absalom may push you to work harder in your company, trying to achieve the vision of the company while somebody inside is eating you slowly, making you look like nonsense. You call your staff and you address them not knowing that their hearts are no longer with you. They look at you as a problem, more a problem than a solution. The devil is a liar. God is here and you he will bless us. Verse 7, now it came to pass after 40 years. This is verse 7. It came to pass after 40 years. Ladies and gentlemen, 40 years is not just two days or three days. No, 40 years. This gentleman has been cooking himself on this matter. You know, oftentimes we, we are under the impression that the, those who have survived the year or two next to us have proven their loyalty. Sometimes it's not so. There are people who are, who might be, I need to say might be because I do not want you to begin to look funny, anyone close to you. And I pray that there may not be an Absalom spirit next to you. And if there is, that God may reveal the exact person so that you may not put everybody in the same basket. There might be people next to you who are the reason why everyone is living, but they're not living. They're just there because they're waiting for the right time. They are hitting you from inside. They are the cause of the division you're experiencing in your family. They are the weakness that you have in your company. No matter what you try, nothing is, uh, you know, manifesting as desired. They are killing your church, but they are still there. Just being there long. There are people that you will carry for long and at the end, they want you to recompense them. Because they think that they have been long, long enough, not knowing that when, while they have been there long, you carry them. Not that they added something. They should be grateful to you that you have allowed the nonsense for such a long time. It came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said to the king, please let me go to Hebron and pay now. Pay the vow which I made to the Lord. Absalom is speaking a spiritual language. He's presenting his plan to the king as a normal plan of somebody who want to do something good. Absalom has the ability to hide his evil doings and intention behind a good-looking and attractive plan. He hides himself. He says to the king, allow me to go and fulfill my vow. I made a vow to God and I want to do so in Hebron. This is a spiritual thing for a spiritual man to approve. And David was such a spiritual man that he liked to hear that my son had made a vow and is fulfilling it. And he explained, he said, for your servant that took a vow while he dwelt in Geshur, in Syria, saying, if the Lord indeed brings uh, me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said to him, go in peace, meaning shalom unto you. So he arose and went to Hebron. Then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, 
Absalom reigns in Hebron. David ruled in Hebron, he reigned in Hebron, and this young son of David did just the same. May every rebellion in your family, in your company, in your church, come across the fire of God to consume it. I rebuke every spirit of rebellion irrespective of how it presents itself. You cannot overthrow your father. God does not operate in that. Strife that we see in the body of Christ today, the Lord has spoken to me to start my ministry. The Lord has spoken to me to start my ministry. The Lord has spoken to me to break away. Is the cause of the weakness of Christianity, if I have to say. Do you understand that Christianity, with all that we claim, speaking in tongue and the gift of the Spirit, are not yet, we are not yet in the level of what Christianity as a religion, you know, makes its backbone, meaning the Catholic Church. You know why? Because everyone that speaks in tongue wants to hear God and uh, join the power of rebellion. It seems like God speaks only to those who speak in tongue to go out there and break away. It seems like Every other body that has been sustainable in growth, even those who are not, according to you and I, linked to Jehovah, as long as they had followed the one way and move away from this uh, uh, unnecessarily senseless breakaways, are growing. Hinduism is growing. Islam is growing. You keep on not, the Lord has spoken to me, fire. You know, I said on Sunday that I had, starting Hallelujah Ministries, I heard God, but I needed my father without influencing him to be part of it. And I came to him understanding that my son must be an extension of my name. My son cannot be Prince Lukau today and tomorrow he becomes Prince Kabongo, no. You are Prince Lukau. As you go to start your home and your family, you'll be an extension of the Lukaus. So I had spoken to my father. I say, maybe this time that I may start Laborn because the Lord has laid upon my heart that it is time to start the ministry. He released me from that. He said, the demand of you starting something that is part of such a big body, the assemblies of God, will require you to go back to the A, B, C, D, and so forth. But I know and feel you are ready. He said, go with what the Lord is laying upon you. He released me from carrying that name. I remember him on the phone telling me, by the way, the name Laban is not a name that I got through prophecies. It's just a name. Remember, it comes from a background, a background of being missionaries. So as a missionary, it did not really matter. So he said, how will you call the ministry that is starting? I say, I'll call it Hallelujah Ministries International. And he say, I will come in due course and be with you in church and minister. To God be the glory for that. You have to understand that rebellion is not approved by God in any way whatsoever. How does God grow the church? He does not grow the church through rebellion. Peter did not rebel. James did not rebel. Even when they went out to spread and grow, none of them stood against another. Oh, well, we speak of uh, Paul who rebuked Peter. Yeah, it was a rebuke. Paul? Peter was not Paul's spiritual father. He was not. So Paul dealt with an issue. To deal with an issue in the church doesn't mean that you rebel against the church. If as brothers and as a member of a council, you realize that this is not what is done and how it's supposed to do, to be done. Addressing it, there is nothing wrong with it. Rebellion has no space in the church. 
when you join someone who has broken away from a church, you have cho chosen wrong. You have chosen a camp that is uh, not the camp of God. I thank God for Hallelujah Ministries unity, and I thank God for Hallelujah Ministries growing. In Hallelujah Ministries, when you don't fit, you jump off. We carry on. The word says, this is the king. I'll say this is Absalom chapter uh, verse 10. Then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, please say this. He is uh, putting them in what they have to do and what they have to say. See, you will say Absalom reigns in Hebrew. And uh, with Absalom went 200 men invited from Jerusalem invited from Jerusalem, and they went along innocently. Do you, do you understand how cunning this man was? He asked his father for permission to go and offer or fulfill his vows, and he invites very prominent figures without revealing to them what is happening. Many people are trapped in that manner. That's why as a father, you must watch out when you start seeing a person doing things that seems to be right, but without your approval, you must know that that is a door that an Absalom may use. It may not be a move of an Absalom, but it is a potential door for an Absalom to enter. You cannot be under me and you do things according to your mind. No, sir, you can't. I submit to the Holy Spirit. I submit to what the Spirit of God say. You got to submit to the same. We live in submission. It is not about how you feel. Who cares about how you feel? Who cares about how I feel? My flesh has to be crucified. Jesus Christ did not go about what he felt. He said, not my will, let your will be done. You submit your will. Oh, well, I feel, I feel. If you want to be me, Mr. Boss, Find yourself some other waters to go and swim. As simple, as clear as that. So everyone has to have boundaries. Absalom went with 200 men. He invited all of them. You starting prayer meeting. You started baptizing people in your bathroom. Really? You're creating a parallel movement. Now I'm coming to have Holy Communion in your house. Really? Oh, well, if that has been approved, there is nothing wrong. We have home cells operating a home cell. Accordingly, do not go beyond what is established because you, my friend, you might fall in the trap. I read and move very quickly now. Verse 11. And with Absalom went 20, I mean, 200 men invited from Jerusalem and they went along innocently and did not know anything. Then Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city, from Gilo, while he offered sacrifice. Then the conspiracy grew strong for the people with Absalom continually increased in number. Oh, well, I gotta stop here today. But it's scary when you see things like this. This seems to be an evidence that uh, it's happening there. Absalom has the anointing. He invited 10, I mean, 200 people, and he even got Ahithopel. Of Ahithopel, the counselor of David, it is said, his advice were equal to the oracles of God. Meaning this man spoke through God for his advice to be in the level of the oracles of God. It means that he operated in the high level of the spirit and the, through the wisdom of God. When Ahitopel spoke, everybody took note. If Ahitopel would say, let's move forward, it was as good as if God had said, let move forward. Ahithopel carried an anointing that was uncommon. Absalom got Ahithopel, the counselor of David. 
it was evident 200 men went from Jerusalem and it was a conspiracy that began to grow and that the number of people increased because he had laid the foundation. Do not follow something because it seems to be appealing to many. You must remain in the word. And as we read further, we will see that not everybody went to Wifa. This new move of rebellion, servant of David remained with him. And as he fled the city, they went out with him. I pray that God may strengthen you. If you are as a person feeling right now that what I am describing seems to be some of your moves, I want you to understand as a child of God, that is not you. That is a spirit of rebellion against the Father that is trying to take a, a position or take the better part of you. Stand, resist it. Resist that devil. Resist the devil and say, devil, I command you to go. It is not my ambition to go against the will of God. And that if you as a father feel like the reason of operation of Absalom spirit, not one, maybe two, maybe three. It is time to take a stand. And that this is a very difficult stand because a father loves. And sometimes a father will want to spare the life of his Absalom. I pray that you may give yourself to God and say, Lord, deliver me from this work of Absalom. The Lord will keep you in sanity. The Lord will keep you in power. The Lord will keep you in strength. You will keep on mounting up with wings like an eagle. Whatever is designed to undermine the will of God in your life is destroyed today in Jesus' name. I pray that God may defeat every spirit of Absalom in your life, in your ministry, in your family, in your organization, in your company, in the name of Jesus. I pray the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ to overflow in your life for his grace and his goodness in Jesus' name. Well, my time is way past. Today, later on from 10 to 11 CAT Central African time, I'll be here with the family of Hallelujah Ministries in Johannesburg, Calvin View, and that together with you across the globe, we will be in the presence of God in Let's Pray. I want you to know that God is doing something special and uh, whatever God is doing concerns you, involves you, and uh, it's all for your good. Until I see you later on today, please remember, I love you dearly and I pray for you daily. May my God bless you. Shalom to you. Thank you for tuning into our broadcast. We trust that you've been blessed. For more information and resources, visit our website at www.alleluiaministries.com. For our prayer line, you may call the numbers on your screen. Tune in to our next broadcast. Stay blessed.